Welcome back fabricators. Today we're gonna to be going over how to build a jig or fixture and the three key things that you need to consider to get the best results. Okay, so today we're gonna to be building a jig or fixture, whatever you wanna call it, to replicate this mid pipe for a sports car. The customer had this mid pipe already and they want to replace it with a fancy clean stainless mid pipe. Now there's multiple ways to go about building fixture. You can do them out of wood, you can do them out of metal, but there's three key things that are gonna affect the accuracy and the ease of using the fixture, especially if you're gonna be doing multiples of them. So the first thing to consider is point of connection. So in this case, on this mid pipe, we have two bolt flanges here and these are gonna be our points of connection. So we're gonna to need to lock down these points of connection and know that we can build our center section to go from A to B, and this is gonna bolt right in. And the second key thing to consider when building a jigger fixture is point of clearance. So this is gonna be a little different since we don't have the actual car to go up in, but we can still make this work. And what we mean by point of clearance is the route that you get from your connection points or from your A to B. So we can't just put a straight tube across from point A to point B and expect that it's gonna clear the existing undercarriage of the car. We need to replicate the points of clearance that this tube needs to run through to be able to get from point A to point B. Now, we're gonna assume that this existing tube already maintains those points of clearance. And the third thing to consider when you're building a jigger fixture is point of access. I've seen lots of jigs and fixtures where they established their points of clearance and they established their points of connections very well. They were solid, but to be able to access it was almost impossible. Whether that had been to get to the welds, to get all the way around it, in this case, that doesn't necessarily apply too much to the center of the tube because we have a mandrel bent piece that we're gonna stick in here to replicate that. But let's say that you were gonna replicate this in the fashion of pie cuts. And so you're gonna have multiple pie cuts that you gotta weld and get all the way around. We need to make sure that there's enough clearance that you can get access to those areas that you need to weld. So that's gonna be very important in establishing, especially those points of clearance for two reasons. One, to be able to get to the weld and two, to be able to get it out of the jigger fixture. That's the other second thing that I've seen people go wrong with. And I actually can't throw too many stones because I've done it on accident myself, is where you get your points of connections locked down. And in this case, these bolt flanges are not parallel with each other. So we're gonna need to consider how we establish all these points so that we can still get it out of the fixture. So we don't wanna build a boat in the barn today. So come along and let's build a fixture. Okay, so I got my end caps made and my kind of exo cage made. Now take in mind, this is not the only way to do this. I see a lot of people will take like a big old chunk of angle iron, like a half inch or three eighths thick chunk of angle iron, but that goes into the access portion to consider this. I decided to make this out of thin wall, inch and a half square tubing for a couple reasons. Number one, it's gonna be light. This is gonna be lighter than a three foot long chunk of 3 8 thick angle iron with this tubing. It's gonna be strong still because it's gonna be boxed in and it's gonna have multiple flat positions on it. So I can roll this thing this way or I can even stand it up on end to go around my flanges in a good position and not have to worry about having too many out of position welds. So now that we kind of have our access kind of envisioned, I got this guy kind of floating in here blocked up and now we need to get our connections. One thing to consider is you definitely want to make sure that your frame, if you're doing it this style, is completely welded before you lock in your connections because thin wall tube will warp under welding. So you want to make sure all that warping is done ahead of time before you weld your connections on because if you just tack everything together, weld your connections on, and then weld it out, 
there is a potential, depending on what tolerances you need to hold, that those connections could fall out of tolerance. So make sure to weld up your XO frame completely before you lock in those connections. So next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna lock down our connection points into this frame. And in my case, I have a CNC plasma cutter and the customer dropped off the new flanges. So I was able to scan these in and draw them up. And we're gonna go over and cut them out on the plasma cutter. And I'm gonna allow a relief in the center here so that it closes off this flange so we can purge it and I can just screw a gas line on the end of it, make it kind of fancy. If you don't have that option, don't worry. You can still just go and cut yourself a chunk of flat bar drill a couple holes in it that are in the same spot, anything to lock in the orientation of that flange because that's the most important part is locking in that connection point and knowing that when you take this tube, it's gonna bolt right into your existing application. So let's get these cut out and weld it in where they're supposed to be. Okay, so now that we have all our connections locked in on the end here, and we have good access all the way around this thing, as you can see, we can get in here, hold around it. Now we wanna worry about our clearances. And what I've found works best, especially for round tubing in defining those clearances, is some chunks of angle iron. So what we're gonna do is, on the straight areas, we have three defined straight areas. So we have here, here, and here. We are gonna take some angle iron on the back side and we are going to run crossbars across here and make some locations to be able to lay that down. Now, for this case, since we have a mandrel bent piece that's going in here, we technically only need one piece of angle iron to make sure that it's clocked properly because we have our two end pieces locked down and there's not gonna be much discrepancy just hitting A and B, you just need to make sure that it's clocked or oriented properly. So technically actually two points, but we're gonna do one at each straight area. And that is because if down the road, if the customer decides he wants to make it out of like pie cuts or whatever, we can set these straight pieces in here and then cut our pie cuts and connect those dots without any issues and with some pretty good accuracy. So let's get our clearances locked in and get this fixture finalized. And here we are. As you can see, we got our clearances all mapped in. We got our angle iron boxed in in all these areas so that just in case they want pie cuts, we can lay those straight pieces in, connect the dots with each of the corners, and we have our hard connections where we need to bolt up to the Y pipe and the muffler or cat, wherever it goes on this end here. So this is gonna be a nice jig or fixture to use, as you can see every angle it lays down flat so you can have nice areas to get to stuff you can stand it up on in you have good access so that you can get to everything no matter where it's going to be at and it locks down all those positions so next time you build your jigger fixture make sure you have your connections locked down your clearances locked down and you have good access to get to everything in a perfect world, you wanna be able to weld out your part completely without taking it out of the fixture. Sometimes that's not realistic because you have certain processes and you almost have to assemble your jig around the part as you're working on it. Depending on what the part looks like is gonna depend on what that fixture is gonna to need to be for your purposes. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. 
If you want to see the next video that comes out, make sure to hit that bell icon down below. And I'm not monetizing videos until they hit over a thousand views. So that's going to be important. Hit that bell icon. You can get in, be one of the first to watch the video and not have to worry about any advertisements or anything like that. Make sure to check out some of our other fabrication content up here. God bless and go build something guys.